right, good evening. My name is Jay Elward, Handmade Angler. I'm here to tie an X caddis, which is uh, an emerging caddis imitation. It works pretty well in the Deerfield uh, River, and it's a fairly simple tie. To start off with, start off, I take uh, some carded Antron and cut myself off, you know, a good serviceable amount to work with. Got a size 14 hook in the vise. When you're working with carded stock, you often get these like kinks. So I usually try to trim those out. I'm getting ahead of myself here because I need to put thread on the hook. You want to start your thread about an eye width away from the eye of the hook. Give yourself a little bit of working room. And then you try to create this nice even body all the way to the bend. And that's one of the keys to this fly and most caddis flies is you want that even underbody to get your body nice and even later on. All right, and we're gonna take our Antron. We're gonna measure up that end of it about a shank length worth. And that's where we're gonna tie it in. I'm gonna do the pinch wraps to hold that into place. So up into my fingers and then directly down. And that kind of helps hold it on the top of the hook. And I'm going to give it like about three wraps just to hold it into place. And then I'm going to take that running end and I'm going to pull that back. And I'm just going to wrap that down, working my thread towards the hook eye at this point. So both the shuck and that running end are pointed off the back of the hook like that. And then I'm going to continue my thread all the way back up towards the out eye of the hook trying to keep my underbody again even. And then when I'm about, I don't know, four turns or so from where I started the thread, I'm gonna throw a whip finish in it or a quick overhand, um, half hitch. Cradle my thread. And I'm a big fan of the full rotary vise, so I'm gonna use that technique to wrap this up. So I'm gonna spin that and I wanna continue this kind of even body. And you can kind of hide that lump at the end um, quite frankly, the fish don't care that much. And once you get there, I take it out of the cradle, move this the arm out of the way. And then instead of trying to like trap that with one big sweeping wrap, I usually just pick up my bobbin and drop it over the top of the hook three times. And then just pull it back. You don't want that kind of getting in your hook eye. Three more wraps, pull tight. We're going to cut that antron out of there. So for the next part, I'm going to use some elk hair. I've got, this is bleached. You can use natural, you can use deer hair. Um, basically anything that you fancy for that. I cut off about, about, I don't know, that's about a pencil's width worth. And we're tying 14s here, which is kind of big for this pattern, but that's still a little too much hair. So I'm going to pull it just a pinch out of there. There we go. Well, that just feels a little better. Clean out my comb. All right, then you're gonna comb out the under fur. It just helps it line up better in the stacker, and it also helps it from rolling off of itself. All right, I'm gonna put that in my stacker. Try to line up here. Tips first. And then I'm kind of an aggressive stacker user, so what I do is I kind of cap the top of my fingertip just like that. A few firm whacks on the table, and then when I open this up, I want to have those tips pointed back towards the fly, or back towards the bend of the hook. Kind of pinch those out. From the eye of the hook, I measure shank length, and then I move that back just a little bit. To where my thread was left and I take one real loose wrap and I kind of put a little bit of pressure on there and I'm putting a fair amount of pinch on these fibers as well to hold them in place. Another one a little tighter and then I'll get down on those and I'll move these hand, this left hand up and I'll grab all that stuff from underneath and I'll really put some pressure to it. Now if you're using a small diameter thread you can cut right through these fibers so you just want to check your tension. So then I come in and I pull all that 
excess hair back towards the bend of the hook. And I come in, and I'm gonna build myself a little mound here underneath those hairs. You know, kinda whatever feels good. And I'm gonna pull those back forward, kinda see what I got here for a wing. Separate those out, come back here, and then I'm gonna give this a few more reps just to kinda crank it down. Here we go. That's good there. Bring that thread back in front of that wing. Grab your whip finisher. And give it three to five wraps on the whip finisher. One, two, and we're gonna just pause there at two. Come back in. Quick and dirty way to do this would be to just add that half hitches by hand. One, two, three. And then I'll use this piece of the bodkin here, support that hook eye, and just make sure those knots are tight. Come with my scissors, just push, push it through the thread. Don't want to slice anything by accident. And then I take all this, all these butts of this hair stack, do what I can to separate it from the wing. We can come in and neaten this up a little bit in a second. And I hold all those forward over the hook eye. Clip it. Some of these errant hairs you can just kind of pull out of the way. Some of that you can just nip off. little head cement there and I just kind of like put a little drop in at the side here where the thread overlaps the wing any excess you just kind of move out of the way like this shucks a little long so I'll just kind of push my scissors through it a little bit kind of uneven it there you go that's the uh, X caddis quick and dirty Now a variation on this fly is you can make it a egg laying female by removing that shuck, adding a little bit of green dubbing at the back there as like a, for the egg, uh, egg sack. And then you can make it real pretty like by adding a couple of rubber legs. Thanks for your time. I hope you enjoy the video and hope you slay your next fish on the X Caddis.